probably going to talk briefly about the London game, Dennis, because we all know what the, the, the full agenda is this week. That was that was the most impressive performance against London in the qualifiers, I would say. You must be very pleased with how professional and, and smartly you did that. It was a good. They were a good side. I say the best, probably out of the championship side, the best attacking unit. They offer a lot. Of, they got enthusiasm. They got a lot of youth in their team. A lot of ambition in their team, and they do things really well. Well coached. So he, like I said, we had to put a good performance in. They had a lot, a lot riding on that game as well. And I, I knew they'd come up early. They stayed over. They were confident, mm -hmm. and it was a, like I said, it was a professional, workmanlike start to the game. Even when we went behind, we knew exactly what we were trying to do, and then all of a sudden the points started to come because because of the things we put in place. Certainly in the middle of the field, I thought your forwards were, were pretty much dominant from from kick off to, to final whistle. Really, I think that I think I think that's been the problem with London throughout these qualifiers. Really, it's been the fact that they, <laughs> so they've got a couple of decent forwards in there, but I say that Super League and the size and the the pace that the middles play with. Was a little bit too much for him, and the blueprint was put in place when Warrington. I know it was a very close game with Warrington, but when Warrington put their mind to it through the middle of the park, they scored pretty quickly and 40 unanswered points, and then London had to fight their way back into the into the game. So we we knew where we were trying to get to, and what we were trying to do against London, and it was a very, I say, very workmanlike. And even with some of the tries we scored, it was uh, some of our shapes were good, and our movement and our purpose was really high. Yeah, that, that dominance in the middle, uh, you had trouble getting over the line, obviously, it's OK, I had a week before. That dominance in the middle gave you a chance to free your arm a little bit, I suppose, didn't it, and show what you can do with the ball? Yeah, we were pretty dominant against Sulkinar as well, I suppose, well, but we just uh, were a bit edgy. Mm. And, like I said, we threw some passes on the weekend that we didn't throw the week before. Uh, we passed the ball a lot more against London than we did the week before, and it showed in um, the tries that we scored. If we just move on to a little bit of a medical roll call, I presume that what you said after the match about Lloyd White stands, he's, he's done. He's done, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so White, uh, Dean, Ambry. Ambry, Bridge, obviously Arvan, all there went out of that, right? Happy with the way that the combina your new combinations worked out on uh, Saturday? Well, it's not a new combination, really. It's a combination we've tried to get to as well. Like I said, Danny Craven's been one of those players that his form's been good all year. When he's been in the side, he's, like I said, he's, but he's still missed. I think it's 10, 12 weeks of the season through injury. Tom and Joe were our starting half, but you look at the numbers on the back, that's what we went with at the beginning of the year. Tom's been unlucky with a lot of injuries and that in and out of the side and just on the edge of it all the way through the year because of injury. And Joe's been the same. And they, they, started, they clicked all right on the weekend, like I said, there was, there was a little bit of something there. I think Tom put his hand up and said he was a bit rusty. I thought he played all right, I think he was good. Carries the ball to the line. And, it's good to have a talker out there, someone to support Joe. And like I say, the connection between those two and Danny Craven was pretty um, pretty strong. You were hopeful that uh, Hedemeyer and Thompson will be back this week. Are they in the 19 Yeah, they're they both in, in, the, in the mix of the 19 man squad. Mm -hmm. As is, like I say, he was hopeful for OKR. Okay, ah, we pushed him all week and he was just a little bit too soon. I gave him the, the week later because of how well Danny Walker went and we wanted to put some work into him to make sure that he was ready for these last last pushes really. Right. And Corey's, yeah, he, he cleared his head test this week and he's ready to go. Okay, the Catalan game, I think you called it a couple of weeks ago was potentially a pre-million pound, million pound game in your words I think and it's turned out to be the case, I mean the pressure on the players this week is, is huge isn't it? It is, well that's like I said we're trying to not talk too much about that kind of, like I said, we need to not overplay the game. It, was, it happened last year, I think Huddersfield, LKR, OKR, and Huddersfield came away with a, a win in that in that last game there to give them um, the status back in the Super League. And I say we go with a tough trip. I think Catalans will be happy that they've got themselves into this position because all the way along everybody was thinking that they wouldn't get themselves in this position. But they got themselves to their destinies in their hands, our destinies in ours. We go there now knowing that one of us will be in a million pound game and the other one will be in Super League next year. Uh, always a tough place to go. I don't think Witness have ever won in a, in a competitive game though, have you? Uh, well, we haven't won there in a, in a friendly either, so. Was that a draw, was it? I can't remember. So, this would be a good time to, to break it up, wouldn't it? The perfect time to break yeah, it up. I don't think we're, we're not too concerned about those kind of stats. Like I said, we've, no, we, we've played 
we played pretty well when we've been there. So we've been unlucky a couple of times. The draw at the beginning of this year gave us a lot of confidence in some terrible conditions. Like I say, on the back of the way we played against London, pretty confident in the things that we need to do. It's just, it's just controlling the anxiety and turning up and playing. I think the team that handles it the best will be the team that comes away with the with the spoils. And there's a lot of pressure on Catalans. It's like I said, they they decide that nobody expected to be in this position. They decide that spent a lot of money. They decide that's at home, um, and everything about them being in Super League is piled back onto them this year, this week. A lot of uh, tough, experienced players in that Catalan side, aren't they? You, you think you'd be able to handle a bit of. Bit of pressure, wouldn't you? The, the Walshies, the Miles, the Horrors, the Inus, people have been around a bit. Yeah, it's a different kind of pressure. This is not being involved in World Cup finals or being involved in grand finals. This, like I said, is, it's a different kind of anxiety, it's a different kind of pressure. And it doesn't matter which player you are or how good you are, it's completely alien to a lot of those high flying players to be in this situation. Yeah, whoever loses this week gets a second chance, but I imagine that's not even on your agenda, is it? It's, it's, it's this week, isn't it? And, and that's it, I suppose, for witness and I, I imagine Catalan. Yeah, well, that's the beauty of the game, is that we can't, we can't look beyond our plan beyond this this week. Everything's loaded into the fact that we know we can go there and win. Um, Ed Chamberlain, I thought, had a good game for you on, on the weekend after, I don't know how many weeks without a game, probably. Uh, he's probably fighting for a place with this week, I imagine, though. He is, in Ryan Ince. Well, I thought we were outstanding. Ryan was really good, and so the competition for places is, is good. Ed's been Ed's been one of those players that he had a couple of starts the year before. I wouldn't say that he was out, outstanding in those games. It was experience for him. He let he let some errors creep into his games, and the anxiety of playing in the, the top team get to him. But he stuck his guns. He came through, and this year, every time we've used him, he's been outstanding. I thought that's. I say he's, he's mature and, and that's sometimes that's what players need, they just need some time. Ed's a good player, he just needed the ability to find somewhere to play. At the moment what he has been doing, he's been training really well, he's been in, in the side or in the training group for the last five or six weeks, working pretty hard to wait for that opportunity and trust, the trust that I have that I can put him out there and know that I'm going to get a really good performance out of him is, is paramount to put him in the team. Over on the day again this for no this game, no we it? we go Friday this time we always plan to head over Friday it was I think it was the most um, convenient time as well mm -hmm. so we head over Friday we stay over Friday night we head back on um, Saturday after the game you mentioned a few times today and in previous weeks about controlling the anxiety what are the methods to use to do that is it basically just going through the same routine you go through for for any game if it was in the middle of the season is that what you do yeah yeah it's it's a, it's a strange one like I said. You'd, there's lots of little tricks and uh, psychological stuff out there that you can try and put. But we don't want to mess about with anybody. We don't want to. We're aware of it. We've been through it a couple of times, and it's got the better of us. So that's hopefully a good, a good starting point. Um, I spoke a couple of times about just normalising it. Like I say, we accept. We accept where we are, and like I say. I've spoken to a real good friend of mine and with a couple of the coaches, and like I say, normalising. <coughs> your week and normalising how your approach to the game and understanding that it's there and accepting it's going to be there but don't try and change anything, just keep doing the little things really well and keep with the processes that you've worked on.